Hello everyone! In this video, I am going to show you how to create this fancy base that is flashed on your screen. Without further ado, let's begin! First things first, in the meantime, let us ignore the presence of these bumps and protrusions on the surface and imagine that this vase has a smooth surface like this. If we take a look at the front plane of this object and consider only half of the sketch that you can see, we have this geometry over here. Let's create the sketch of this half view. Going back to our CAD, Click the Create tool in the upper left corner of your screen and then select the plane parallel to the front plane. So I'm gonna select this plane in particular. And also in order to change the view, I am going to click the front plane of the cube in the upper right corner of the screen. This one. Notice that the vase is 180 millimeters high from its base, so let us create a vertical line from the origin with the same height. So I'm going to click in the line tool, select the origin, and vertically trace upward while typing 180 millimeters. The top of the vase has a base circular radius of 35 millimeters, so I'm also going to sketch a horizontal line from the upper end of the vertical line I just sketched. So click here, and then click here. It should be 35 millimeters. Meanwhile, the bottom of the vase has a radius of 35 millimeters, so I'm going to do basically the same thing what I did on top, only this time it's at the bottom. According to our technical drawing, the curvature of the vase can be simplified as two circular arcs. One over here, and another over here. The endpoints of the top arc are vertically aligned, and it has a distance of 180 millimeters. So let us first construct this top arc. Click Create, hover down to Arc, and then select 3-point arc. So click the open endpoint of the upper horizontal line over here. So I'm going to click this and afterwards, I'm going to hover vertically downwards. And in order to ensure that the endpoints of the arc are actually vertically aligned, this icon should appear. So if it doesn't, if it doesn't appear, then you might want to hover further. So that if it doesn't appear, it means that it's not yet vertical. And then type 80 millimeters. Then click, and then select an arbitrary point a little bit to the left, but vertically between these two endpoints. There you have your top arc. Let's proceed by sketching the bottom arc that connects the top arc and the base. So just click create, and then hover down to arc, and then select tangent arc instead of three point arc. So this allows you to make a smooth arc that connects two endpoints and it helps us avoid the presence of unnecessary dents and sharp edges. Now it prompts you to select uh, two different endpoints. So you can just click the endpoint on the top and also the endpoint of the base. We actually do not need the horizontal lines anymore as we only constructed them as reference lines in order to create the two arcs that we just have created. So let's just delete these two and proceed to the next steps. So I'm gonna select this and then press delete. Select this one and then press delete. After this, you can now exit sketching mode. So this is gonna be the first sketch in our project, in this project. What we're going to do next is sketch this flower-like cross-section at the top of the vase. So you can see in this drawing, there is a flower-like figure, flower-like geometry. To do that, we need to construct a plane parallel to the top plane. Take note that although it's parallel to the top plane, it has to be translated at a length that is equal to the vertical line that we constructed. 
So, click the drop down menu at construct. Select offset plane. Select this plane over here. And if the pop up menu prompts you to do something, what we're going to do is to select measure over here. So this allows us to have more flexibility on editing this project. Hover on your screen and select the vertical line we initially created. So if you can't select it, I need to uh, use the controls to change the orientation. And then after selecting it, hit OK. Now we have this offset plane. Click Create Sketch. And then select the offset plane we just created. Before proceeding, let us again refer to our technical drawing and notice that the flower-like cross section is composed of alternating concave and convex arcs. The midpoint of the concave arc is about 35 millimeters away from the center, while the endpoints are 37 millimeters away from the y-axis. Going back to our sketch, let's create a 5 millimeter vertical line over here. So click the line tool, select the origin as one endpoint, hover a little bit up, and then type 5 millimeters. Press the left button of your mouse, and then construct a 37 millimeter horizontal line like this. Now I'm going to do the same thing at the bottom. Passing through the origin, there must be a horizontal line with a length of 35 millimeters. So let's construct this horizontal line. Next, click Create, and then go to Arc, and then select 3-point Arc. So this 3-point uh, Arc actually will ask us to select the different points that our Arc will pass through. So we will make use of these three endpoints. So select this endpoint at the top, select another endpoint at the bottom, and the third point being this one in the middle, being uh, this one somewhere in between. So you can now see one concave arc in our geometry. We actually don't need the horizontal and the vertical lines anymore, so we can just delete them for us to have a cleaner view. Now you have the choice to create this arc 12 times because there are 12 convex arcs in our drawing but I'm not going to do that of course. What I'm going to do is to let Fusion 360 repeat it for me. Without exiting the sketch, I'm going to go click create and then hover down the circular pattern and then select the object that I want to create a pattern of. So I'm going to select this arc that we have created a while ago. Now, as you can notice in this menu over here, there are dif different options. So I'm going to click on select, which is located beside center point. And after that, I'm going to select the point coinciding with the origin in this view as the center point of my pattern. So what Fusion 360 will do here is that it will replicate this arc by rotating it around the center point that we have created. We were supposed to repeat this arc 12 times. I'm ju just gonna type 12 over here and then hit enter. Now there you have it. Without exerting much effort, you have Fusion 360 do the work for you. Now let's create the convex arcs. Go to create, hover down to arc, and then select Tangent Arc. Now I'm going to click on two consecutive endpoints from two different concave arcs. And this will be the endpoints of my convex arcs. And there you go. Instead of repeating the process, 
what I'm gonna do is to use circular pattern and let Fusion 360 do the repetition for me. Again, hit create, select circular pattern, select convex arc, and then select this as the center point. Of course, you are also gonna make 12 copies of it because we, we had 12 copies of the concave arcs. As you can see, your sketch is now highlighted which means that it is closed and is ready for the next step. We can now, for the second time, hit finish sketch. Okay, so I'm gonna press shift and click the scroll button and drag a little bit in order to, to change the view of my screen. The next thing that we want to do is to sweep this cross section from the top of the base all the way down to the bottom. What we're gonna do here is to let this cross section pass through along this vertical line over here while maintaining this point, this point, contained in these curves. So we are going to, uh, it's like extruding it, but extruding it along a certain path, okay? So that's the difference, the primary difference of sweep into the function extrude. The function extrude only uh, applies thickness to it in a perpendicular manner, but in sweep you can, you can apply thickness to it in a little bit tilted manner or along a path and so on. To do that, click Create, and then select Sweep, and then it will ask me to select a profile to sweep so we can select our flower-like cross-section. Next, I'm going to ensure that the type of sweep we are creating is due to a path and a guide rail. So, I'm going to modify this. And then click this button over here. Select the vertical line as the path. Click this button. And then select these arcs as the guide rail. There you go. We're almost done with this base. Okay, so take note that this vase is still solid, which means that you still cannot place anything inside it, which further means that, realistically speaking, it's useless. So what we want to do is make this solid hollow at a constant thickness. Let's use Fusion 360's powerful tool called Shell, which is located at the Modify section, and then select the topmost plane of the vase. Make sure that the, that the direction here is inside and input a thickness of 2.55 millimeters. So take note that this tool might take a while before the results become visible because of the intricate detail details that we included in this project. If you're done, if it shows you already, the almost final output like what you're seeing in the screen, you can finally hit OK. And now your vase is hollow. Before we proceed with the finishing touches, let us extrude the bottom of the vase by around 2.5 millimeters. So select the bottom face over here, click extrude, and then type 2.5 millimeters. In order to avoid sharp edges, let us create smoothened edges at the top and the bottom of our vase. So, click Fillet over here under the Modify section, press Ctrl, select the bottom edges, and also the top edge over here. Type 2 millimeters because we want to create a fillet, we want to create fillets with radii of two millimeters and then finally hit enter so you're good to go finally let us apply the finishing touches by adding nice colors in our vase under the modify option hover down and then click appearance 
and there appears a database of materials that we can use so on this part of your screen now I'm gonna click on the folder beside other and then I want a gemstone color for my bait so I'm gonna click this folder over here so left click here and drag it to the body you want to change the appearance of again you can browse other appearances as you wish and if the appearance that you want is not yet available you can download them by you can download it by clicking the arrow on the right that's it thank you for watching this video i hope you learned something and if you do don't forget to hit like and subscribe